people are a part of your spiritual formation. Hi, I'm Pastor Brenda. Tonight we're going to talk about finding space for holy in each other. Because people are a part of our spiritual formation. Yeah, people. People, right? I mean, you, you like your family sometimes. You probably love your friends because you got to choose them. Some of you probably love people, love the vibe of people. You just need to be into the beat of people. And some of you, just as little as possible, a few times, you know, a few times like that. I think all of us can agree that we agree that people exist. So when I say that people are a part of spiritual formation, you probably feel an ugh inside of you. Ugh. Because, because people disappoint. And then if you add to this, like we're in this post-pandemic recovery and to this, this thing that happened to our soul where during the pandemic, Everyone was the enemy because everyone had the opportunity to make us sick or to kill us. And then something we're finding here in the post pandemic also is some friendships. Some friendships went away and it's amazing. These false narratives we're making up as to why these friendships ended. I mean, maybe they're true narratives or maybe we're just like, don't know what happened. So we're making up these false narratives because because people, people disappoint. So, so here's your first question for the, for this conversation. All of us have had smaller circles of friends post pandemic. I mean, all of us, has this been a good thing or a bad thing for you? And then second question to have with your people, I hope you're gathering with some friends right now or as a family or as your roommates. The second question is, um, have you been making any new friends post pandemic? Have that conversation. I'll be right here. Okay. Remember that conversation as we go forward from this point on. So when we look at our theme verse for this entire series, and that's Matthew 11, 20 through 30. Read, read it in this context of each other, okay? Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Now this could easily read, it's just to be me and Jesus going forth, carrying that yoke together. But we should also read this as come all of us who are weary and heavy burdened. All of us, let's come together and share each other's burdens. People are a part of our spiritual formation. Why? Because on our own, we will incorporate some very good spiritual practices. We, I mean, we are coming to Jesus because we have a problem that needs to be fixed. We have some emotional healing that needs to happen. We are trusting for God for the, our bigger story. And we, I mean, it's, we come to Jesus. So we start a, a Bible reading practice and we start a prayer practice. And maybe we start trying to give it all to God. And then we start trying to memorize verses and knowing our identity in Christ. And we're doing things that all of a sudden become striving for God to see us. Because sometimes when life hurts, it feels like that God is inactive. We talked about disappointment in God last week how to find holy in that. So I encourage you to, to listen to that one. And so we think we need to get God's attention. So we're doing these things. And then once God feels inactive, we then get angry with God. 
we feel this disappointment in God and we start striving to do more things to get God's attention and more and more and more when all along we really need to see someone particularly those wise overcomer people in your life those ones you know who've been through something who've been through life who have loved Jesus for a long time and all of a sudden when we tell them something oh we realize we don't need to strive to get God's attention because this is how God works so they tell us the story of how God works I'm like oh I needed to hear that but when it's just you and Jesus you start leading your brain we've got a whole series on that and you start regurgitating the same things over and over again I'm going to I'm going to do this for Jesus. I'm going to, you know, because I'm going to do A, 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 A so I can get B. So I can get God's attention and get this to happen. But when we sit down with each other, we sit down with those wise overcomers, they can tell us the stories of how our faith really works. And that is such a beautiful gift. It gives us things to think about. Our, we can lead our brains and regurgitate on the stories of what they have shared about us. And this, this is, this is the gift of each other. This is why we do church. For this church here, we meet on Friday nights. We have conversation. We meet through Zoom. We have people coming from in from, I think, 14 different states right now. And we have these conversations. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling like, where is God in my story? And I hear someone else's story, and I see God. And I see God in this person's doubts. And I can share something to bless this person. And we have this gift of each other. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing holy all the time in our conversations. I hope that you use this video with your friends to find these moments of holy in each other in these conversations. And this practice, you guys, is all over the Bible. It's particularly in the epistles, which is what we call here other people's mail, because these are written to, to the young church of how to, to live like Jesus. And they wrote things to the other church, other people's mail, saying like 1 Corinthians 12, 25, this makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. 1 Thessalonians 5:11. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Yes. First Peter 4.10 God has given each of you a gift for his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve another. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. That's Hebrews 10.24. And I just chose four. It's just part of our practice. People are part of spiritual formation. But I know people disappoint. This is true. There's a great book I recommend. It's written by Paul Tripp called Relationships, A Mess Worth Making. Um, this, Paul Tripp also has written the best parenting book ever. It's called Parenting, Paul Tripp, T-R-I-P-P. -P. And the best, I cannot recommend that book enough. This book on relationships, this much full of grace as that parenting book is. He wrote this about relationships. The problem with relationships is that they all take place right smack dab in the middle of something. And that something is a story of redemption. God's plan to turn everything in our lives into instruments of Christ-like change and growth. You're messy and I'm messy and we're growing. Hopefully we're growing forward in that long obedience in the same direction. That's how we describe a life of faith here. But I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We're growing together. We're going to disappoint each other. But at the same time, this means you also don't have to excuse bad behavior. You don't have to just accept it as this other person. All of your friendships, they go through seasons. They all really you're going to have an ending at some time in your life. There is very rare to have a friendship of 40 years, to have a lifetime friendship. And even if you do have one of those, 
you know that friendship goes through seasons. You know, there's the season of spring where this friendship is new and life is blooming. And then there's the season of summer where life is just easy, breezy, wonderful summer. And then you get into the season of fall and this friendship takes deeper roots as all the chlorophyll goes in and you, your friendship becomes deeper rooted, ready for hibernation or starts to getting brittle and maybe falling away. And then comes winter. And friendships and friendships come to an end. That's just true. So while people disappoint, we also recognize that these gift of friends that we have, also, they do have seasons in our life. And it could be so many things. It might be a friend you had at work and you changed jobs and no longer you're no longer that same kind of friend. You know, or your your friends when all your children were the same age, but now you're no longer it's just just fine. But these people are still your gift for this season in your life. And it's worth trusting them. And it's worth what they can give you to teach you. I wrote this about me being a friend. I said, I wish having a Christian friend meant I wasn't exposing my vulnerable self to be hurt or to be betrayed. But that is assuming that my Christian friend is perfect when I know I am an imperfect friend to my imperfect friends. Yes, I wish having that Christian word on meant I wasn't going to be hurt by people. It doesn't, does it? Because I am imperfect. Paul Tripp wrote these truths about the real of re of relationships. These four very simple truths. Just say amen along with me. Our relationships will never work according to our plan because relationships reveal our heart and build our character. Mm, yuck, right? Our relationships will never live up to our expectations this side of heaven. None of us get to be with the person of our dreams and none of us are ready to be the person of someone else's dreams. Our relationships will gra always grapple with some kind of difficulty. This could be you. This could be me. This could be a life circumstance. Do we have grace for all of this? And four, our re relationships will always need to improve. People are going to disappoint you. you. You are going to disappoint people. But people are still a part of your spiritual formation. This is a parable I tell most often. See if you get what I mean. A young boy was walking with his father along a country road. When they came across a very large tree branch, the boy asked, Do you think I can move that? His father answered, If you use all of your strength, I am sure you can. The boy tried mightily to lift, pull, and push the branch, but he couldn't budge it. Discouraged, he said, Dad, you were wrong. I can't do it. His dad said, Try again. This time, as the boy struggled with the task, his father joined him. Together, they pushed the branch aside. Son, the father said, the first time you didn't use all your strength. You didn't ask me to help. You see it, right? People are a part of our spiritual formation. Inviting people into your doubts, into your pain, into your joys is you using all of your strength to grow your faith in that long obedience in the same direction. And the beauty of this is that both of us experience moments of awe. I know for me, when I have been the one that's been receiving, and I, have, I wrote a book about this, by the way. You can find the book on our webpage. I wrote a book all about this dedicated to the people who have carried me through my pain. I've been in awe at their faith, their faithfulness to me, their words of wisdom, their consistency has brought me awe. And on the flip side, they will say to you that they have experienced awe as they said something that wise. And they're like, that came out of my mouth? And I'm like, that was just the right thing to say. 
and they're experiencing awe at being able to help me, to carry me with my pain, to do these things that are written about in my book. So this is, this is your next conversation question. It's kind of a story time question. Share when you have experienced this awe, whether it's been on the receiving end, when somebody actually sat in the mud with you and heard your story and said something or did something that was so beautiful that it provided awe, or if you were on the other side and you went into someone's mud party and you came out of that going, wow, I saw God in that moment. Share that story right now. People are a part of our spiritual formation and we get moments of awe like this. To accept someone's love and encouragement, to be truly seen, to bring someone on, on, in on your doubts, amazingly helps your other spiritual practices. It's like bringing other people in, all of a sudden reading your Bible makes more sense. Talking about the Bible together, all of a sudden it just makes more sense. But you're also finding it easier to pray. Because instead of you just praying, you know, just you and Jesus carrying that yoke, you just praying for your situation, you start just praying for that situation. And you start praying for you and your pain. And it's kind of cycles downward. And, and But when you start praying for me, because I'm one of the each others in your life, you're praying for me and for the people that I love and the people that who love love. And the, you start praying for the missionaries in our church because you're a part of our church. And you start praying for the issues in the world. Like we talk about the sin of systemic racism here all the time. So you start praying for that because you're with people that are talking about that. You start praying. All of a sudden your prayer life becomes not just you and Jesus carrying this heavy yoke of pain. All of a sudden you start praying for other people and me and the people who I love. And you start growing this bigger heart of compassion and you're now praying out of compassion, and all of a sudden your prayer life looks very different. Then you're also, you're also learning more about yourself, like you see that you've developed a pattern of disconnecting from people once you're with each other. Or you see how you've allowed yourself to not need anyone, so your hurt is never touched by anyone else. And you find out that that's, that's not a way to handle your pain. Or you see how your depression or your overwhelmed state is not good. And it's really actually deeper than you thought it was. Because each other, these people, can see you and kind of show, ooh, look at this, look at this. And spiritual practices now have become more than just prayer and Bible study. Your near spiritual practices also include being able to cry and grieve over your losses. This is a spiritual practice. Life hurts. Something bad happened. It is worth grieving over and you can do that. And someone can help you do that together. It feels together, not so empty. Another spiritual practice is you can learn to accept comfort from people. You can repent of relational patterns that have kept you from loving others. You also learn to forgive those who have hurt you. The ability to trust other people, people who may still disappoint you, but to trust these people also help you find your way in that journey of forgiveness. And we have a whole series of that too, way back on the YouTube channel. Now this new spiritual practice is you get to overcome the defenses that have kept you from responding to others in love. And then you also learn, and this is probably the best part of our Friday night church time, is we learn to see God in this larger story. Like, I hear your story and your doubt and your questions, and as you're sharing this stuff in our larger story church meetings, I'm seeing God active. I'm seeing God in whole different facets. I'm seeing God close. And I'm seeing God from my own situation with what you have learned and it has made my view of God so much better. It has been one of the greatest gifts of starting this church is how I can see God in my own painful situations because of the others who have joined us on Friday nights. And there are other things you can learn to grow about yourself such as 
You gain an awareness of what you like and don't like. People help you figure that out. You define who you are and who you are not. Some people you just need to have boundaries with. You can learn that from others. You can stop blaming others for everything. You can stop playing the victim yourself. Others t teach you this. You can learn perseverance. That's a good spiritual formation, right? You can become proactive and not reactive in your decisions from other people helping you. You can challenge your dis distorted thinking, leading your brain, regurgitating the good stuff so you can move forward or just stay stuck in that Jesus and you carrying that yoke. You can learn new Bible reading ideas from other people. And you can learn new ways to pray, like creative ways to pray. Oh, there's so many things you can learn from other people. So when we pray the Lord's Prayer, and disciples ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. And he said, this is how. We always begin by saying, our Father, who art in heaven. Our Father. That very prayer invites us to be together. Doing this work of the kingdom together. It is very much meant to be together. Our prayers are not just about me. It's about you, it's about the social justice, it's about the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. So we're gonna pray the Lord's Prayer right now and I invite you where you are just to say it along with me. This is, this is us together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When you pray that prayer at home or when you pray that prayer in church, you're always inviting each other into the story of your life. Now your app for the week is this app called Three Good Things. We used it two weeks ago in our Ordinary series. And it's an app, it just every night you bring it up and you just list three good things that happened to you throughout the day. And at the bottom of that app, it says share with a friend. So I'm in, in challenging you for the next week or more to find space for holy with each other by sharing the three good things with two friends and watch how this changes your friendships. Your growing slow habit for the week is just linger for a few extra minutes after dinner. Just, just linger for a bit. I don't know if you eat with your family, if you eat with friends, if you're eating out at a restaurant, or you eat by yourself. It doesn't, which, whatever way. Just eat your dinner, enjoy your food, enjoy the conversation, enjoy what you're learning in your head, if you're eating by yourself. And when you're done, just linger a few minutes longer. Take that growing slow habit. <clears throat> and our breath prayer for the week is you'll find the, the meme for this in our notes here. It is, we're gonna breathe in. I don't know what I believe, but I know it will sound like dignity. Let's do that together a few times right now, okay? Breathe in. I don't know what I believe, but I know it will sound like dignity. I don't know what I believe, but I know it will sound like dignity. I don't know what I believe, but I know it will sound like dignity. Keep breathing that prayer and find out if you can find some discernment in your friends and who your people are. And I got one last challenge for you this week. If there's someone, one of these great wise overcomers in your life who you know you can trust, who has, who has been in that moment of awe with you, send that person a note. Tell them this. Um, handwritten note, put it in the mail, or write an email send that person a note because when it comes to living this life of faith in this very rushed crazy damaged post-pandemic world 
We do, we find space for holy when we're with each other in those moments of laughter, those moments of honesty, those moments of doubts, and that person is with you, you do not forget that person. Even if that friendship comes to an end, you do not forget that person. So may you this week find time for others and may you laugh, may you pray, maybe you even cry together and may you find Jesus in these relationships. Amen.